Welcome everybody to another episode of my uh, podcast and uh, as my avid listeners know, avid, I've never said that before, my listeners know I'm always delighted to have um, guests on here but I am going to fanboy a little bit on today's guest because I have uh, none other than um, Andrew Gobblesall, uh, MBE, for any certainly England rugby fans, um, Andrew needs no uh, introduction but for those who maybe aren't uh, rugby fans, how dare you, um, they are out there I believe. Uh, Andrew, would you like to uh, just give a little background as to who who you are. Yes, uh, well, some of my uh, very good friends in business, um, even after a year of my retirement, said you're a long time forgotten uh, very quickly. Can't remember who you are. What did you do? So, um, yeah, that that uh, humour carries with you. Uh, you have to remind people, yes, I was a big deal back in the day. <laughs> um, and tell my children that I used to play because they look at me now and go, nah, there's no chance you played. <laughs> um, yes, <yeah, so laughs> Andy Gomesall. Uh, a lucky uh, little chap that um, was at university and got offered a contract to play professional rugby, which uh, wasn't exactly professional back in the day. So still had the old amateur ethos, but yeah, I played 16 years um, for a number of clubs, seven in fact, hold the, uh, hold the premiership record. Which I'm not exactly proud of, and I don't know why I'm thinking that. Um, uh, and yeah, 2003, we won the World Cup, which uh, fundamentally changed um, our lives. And um, now I'm in business uh, with N2S, uh, uh, and a, a new rebrand to Bioscope. Um, so yeah, uh, that's uh, my new world business, and trying to um, trying to play the game. Play the game. Let's get the uh, how many cliche acronyms can we get in during the uh, podcast? <laughs> I mean, yeah. that, that's a very modest kind of introduction to to you. I remember that morning very very well, two thousand and three. That final moment when Johnny's drop goal went over, and um, and then all hell break loose. And you know, I was living in London at the time. I think the country went absolutely on bonkers. So. Um, what, what a time to be alive and what a time to witness um, uh, some absolute greatness. And it is an absolute pleasure to have you on, the, uh, on this, uh, this podcast. So we're going to talk about something a little bit different, not different today, but I think coming at sales from a different angle. So I met um, Andy at an event uh, last week, week before last, uh, where Andy posed a very interesting question around um, <clears throat> ESG and the environment and sustainability, having you spoke at, obviously, um, obviously you spoke at COP26, people don't necessarily know that. And are we, are we greenwashing sales? And what we mean by that, as a sales leader, sales person within your sales team, do you, A, understand what your own organization's um, green credentials are to try and help get to um, net zero 2025, 20, 2030, whenever the um, uh, the targets are. And then alongside that, whenever you are selling, are your prospective clients, clients asking you about your green credentials and or are you volunteering your green credentials and or are they asking you about your product or service and how does that potentially impact the I guess the entire supply chain really in terms of green credentials and you know I had a really interesting debate um, around around this so it's like if you don't know why your own business is net zero you have no real justification and then from your view really kind of pushing your your products or services without having that kind of background uh, knowledge so debate Andy let's just sort of unpack this a little bit further and just let's get your views because this is obviously very much your um, your world so what why are you passionate about this um, crikey, I think I've alluded to it, changing the game. Um, mm-hmm. in, 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 in my world today, the, the system um, is broken and the process um, is flawed if you are to adopt a net zero pathway. So um, changing the game is an imperative and it's uh, an acceleration. It's uh, how quickly can we do this? Uh, and I, I've posted um, uh, quite a lot about the, this next decade. Um, and my world is um, is unverified. Um, over sixty percent of the um, equipment that gets recycled is has not been proved, so there's mm-hmm. no data on it. So it's a real um, challenge. And whatever your whatever business you're in, and you're talking to customers, and from a sales point of view, you kind of got to forgive yourself that unfortunately until um, 
there is um, a unification of how we assess one another and how we assess ourselves and the government's come up with a um, a system and uh, a metric that is verified by the world. Unfortunately, we're all greenwashing. And, and so that's the challenge, but you have to forgive yourself. And, and the, the, the supply chain that I've been involved in, you know, I'm saying we're changing the game and we're um, in terms of the A to Z of the portfolio, I'm at B, but it's, I'm at B further away from anyone else. So I'm, I'm saying I'm still doing a bit of the old system, um, but I am transforming to the new system. Unfortunately, in, in today's market, nobody is changing the system and that's the challenge and, and difficulty. So I can, I can feel a bit of guilt of greenwashing, um, but I know I'm on a pathway to championing a system um, that is circular. Yeah. Because the world at the moment is 9% circular. That's coming from the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. If you don't know what that, that is, it's all about circular economy. 65% mm -hmm. um, of the carbon emissions in the world goes into making products that we buy every single day. Um, and so it's quite a, it's quite a, um, an opportunity. Uh, and so I'm sort of on this journey, but I'm quite open about it. Yep, we're all greenwashing uh, until that system changes and that verification comes in. And so with, with that in mind, and if, if we kind of not park, because it's kind of really important that the verification kind of comes in. And I know that, you know, some of my friends who uh, work for the large auditing companies, they're starting to look at how you can create an assurance around your kind of green, um, uh, green credentials, but it's not, it's not easy, right? Because there is no kind of set standard even even auditing around the world doesn't necessarily have set standards depending on what country you are and what kind of tax regime that you uh, you work in and accounting regimes and and so on so if i just then reflect on the the poll the, the bloody polls on linkedin as in the the questions not the country i have i dare i dare say <laughs> nationality um i pose the question around uh, are sellers across all industry are you asked about kind of esg and credentials in terms of what you're selling i had a couple of hundred uh, votes on it and the votes closed and i think it's roughly 75 percent said no 25 percent said yes i had a look through those votes and what was interesting the ones that said yes primarily from a real estate background which kind of logic makes sense um, because that's obviously a big part of uh, all of this and all people that were selling esg related um products or services so again logic kind of dictates that that would make sense the vast majority that said no were what i would describe as your more traditional sales tech SaaS type of approach where dare i say it it's a numbers game it's just get the emails out there get the calls out there get the the products and service um sold a little bit of over promising and delivering on some of this stuff but absolutely it wasn't on the the radar and the the sales groups i'm in and part of it's certainly not part of the the conversation at the moment the conversation is more around how do i get data about people that i want to sell stuff to and mm -hmm. how do i do it more quickly and more more effectively so where where do we where do we need to start on this is it we just need to volunteer the education to the buyers do we need to educate ourselves internally do sales leaders need to take ownership of this does the ceo need to take ownership of this where I feel in my mind, I know where one needs to start, but it'd be interested in terms of your, your take and the fact that you manage a sales team, as you, know, you, you manage and run a set, your sales function as well within your own business. I, I'm not sure I manage, I try and lead, <laughs> I try and lead as best I can. Um, it's a really, it, it's very topical this right now because I don't think there's one answer to this. And it, is sustainability ESG running through the course of the veins of your business that is the question you need to ask the company is fine if it's not 100 percent. there are some real leaders out there mm -hmm. um, there are some companies that have been doing it for decades so th there's a real disparity there in terms of um, the answer we you have to find out and you have to assess for your own um, self as a as an employee of that company um, and then it begs the question about education, go find it yourself, because we're lucky to be born in a generation where 
we have the internet and we can go and find out anything. Um, YouTube, uh, Google, you can, you can go and find out and be educated and become a subject matter expert in uh, scope one, two, three uh, emissions, greenhouse gas protocol. You can go and find this out. Now that might sound really boring, but when you start to look into it, it gets very, very interesting. And you can start to pin that on some of the beliefs and um, values you have for our planet and the reality of what is occurring um, every se second that we that we inhabit this uh, this planet. So I think um, educate yourself. Um, the uh, management, the leaders need to uh, educate, but nobody at the moment feels like they're extensively baselining their company right now. And, and that is the full scope three emissions. Scope one and two is mandatory for the big uh, companies. Yeah. So you can start to um, look at the ambitions and targets the company has made. But when you start to look at scope three emissions, it's um, I posted earlier today about this, is um, there can be um, some avoidance of uh, looking into your supply chain. Um, and that might be tactical or that might be ignorant. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem of that is, is how do we get to a true net zero? And if we are going to be true net zero, and these are the experts that have been doing this a lot longer than I are saying that we need to make scope three mandatory, which that, that means from a sales point of view, we're all in, in it together. Yeah. And that's what's exciting for me because that changes the narrative in that you can be really genuinely transparent and honest about where you are at because there is everyone is guilty today yeah. there, is, there, is, there is there are no innocent parties in this so let's just drop all of that now and can we have an honest uh, transparent and this is what we're trying to do and how do we uh, educate but then inspire for me sport was very inspiring so how do the leaders start to inspire not only your employees but your supply chain how do we how do we inspire uh, to improve and change the game quicker um, rather than, um, I don't want to look over there because I know it's not very good, see no evil, hear no evil, yeah. uh, principle. So I think um, uh, the, it, it stems all the way through an organisation from the person that's the, you know, the, the classic sporting analogy, the person that, that cleans the changing rooms to uh, gets the pitch uh, exactly right, that puts mm -hmm. the posts up to uh, does the nutrition, to do, everyone in the, from the CEO, chairman, right the way down, needs to be accountable and educate themselves and then inspire uh, and spread um, the gospel, as it were. And I also believe that, and you'll see some of the people that take it seriously because you can go on the wonderful, and Alex, you showed me the wonderful LinkedIn. Yeah. So you can see how many people are employing these uh, experts and if, if, if you haven't got a resident expert in your team, not the, the person that was a bit lost in your organization, so we'll give them head of sustainability, <laughs> the, the true experts um, that know about embodied carbon, um, that can assess, that can um, help guide boards uh, and companies to be better, uh, even when it hurts and you're going to lose some um, business or revenue in the interim, um, profitability, whatever, whatever, whatever the KPI is that you don't want to be hurt. Um, if you haven't got those experts in your organisation, then you are miles behind. I think you raise really a really interesting point there around th this. This is going to hurt potentially organisations financially. However, if we Kind of, again, take a little bit of a step back and look at the, the conversation around the great resignation and the great reshuffle and the next generation. And I don't like labeling labeling generations and this and that, but you know, it, it is what it is, and it's kind of how how we label um people. And the challenge that sales is, dare I say it, facing at the moment is 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 it a good even career choice to to make? I certainly fell into sales and actively choose to go into sales. I thought about being a lawyer and wasn't good enough. Um, little did I know, fast forward to where we are today, maybe we could have taken that, um, uh, that career path. 
But it's interesting if you look at kind of the narrative that Andrew Huff, um, who's the chief exec of the International Institute for Sales Professionals, actually posted just now around how employers need to start looking at creating sales as a career, but ethics is a massive thing for him in terms of the ethics, in terms of honesty, integrity, and all this kind of piece. But again, if we look at what's the next generation coming through, and certainly you know, you've got kids and I've got a six-year-old and a three-year-old, they are going to be looking at employers, not only from a you know a DNI diversity and an inclusion perspective, but there's going to be absolutely, I want to know what your, your green credentials are. I want to know what you're doing to actually help save the planet that I'm having to inherit. And if you are not explicit about what you're doing, absolutely take on board, Andy, what you're saying that we're all greenwashing to a some extent, but if we at least kind of pull our hands up and go, okay, just draw the line in the sand as it were, how do we move forward from here? Those organizations that are brave enough to start doing that will start to attract, dare I say, the right type of employee yeah. versus those that, um, uh, those that don't. And you've got to start uh, somewhere. And again, it's interesting in the you know, professional service world, privately, I'm having partners at large organizations kind of saying to me, they're having this kind of um, suggested very heavily to them that also we shouldn't be working with organizations that don't adhere to these values because from a brand perspective if we are seen to be um, uh, augmenting what they're doing and supporting what they're doing by the type of advice that we provide that is not a good um, good thing and again some law firms talk to them about this you know they recognize this but they recognize it's a it's tricky if you work for some of the biggest coal mining companies in the world that generate huge amounts of revenue and income. Um, that's a hard pill to swallow for, dare I say, those at the latter stages of their career. But it's how do you at least position the narrative that we are trying to guide them along, dare I say, that legal path as to where they can go with this and again talk publicly about it let alone if you move into the technology world and one forgets about data centers right and the consumption that these things um uh have and there's research out there about the, the carbon emissions for email marketing the carbon emissions for scrolling through your social media feed we don't even as consumers sort of take a step back and think about that even now you know doing this flipping zoom call is costing the is costing the planet somewhere um, something. Now, one could argue you and I hadn't gotten a car to go and do this, right. uh, you know, face to face, and and right. so on. So all these SaaS tech companies that are spinning up to um, build the new thing, all these sellers maybe aren't even giving, giving consideration around what is powering to the supply chain piece their technology. Um, do they truly know the impact that that is? Um, that that is having and it's you know to your point it's not it's not easy but certainly since you and I met and you kind of talked about it you know I'm really starting to think about this and educate myself myself further for example scope three you know wasn't aware of so I'm going to go and learn learn about that and I yeah for me it's as much the self-education piece and to your point about the internet to your point about LinkedIn and Google and any social media feed for the positive stuff you know, go and find the hashtag ESG, go and find the hashtag environment. You know, it's not difficult to, to find the subject matter expertise out there to start forming your opinion. And dare I say it back to the future employee, there's also, you know, from a technology perspective, organizations look at reverse mentoring. So a junior person in the team will work with a senior person, the senior person will help with career development and that kind of things, whereas the junior person will help them understand the the internet or technology or how to push buttons one could say that there may be this generation who get this the need to reverse mentor the um i don't want to say older generation but you know where i'm going <laughs> this is what i think this is what i feel this is what i care about <clears throat> what can we start to do about this yeah i think um it comes back to in again, from my sporting background is culture is, is everything um, in that uh, the best teams uh, aren't the ones, uh, especially in a salary capped um, mm -hmm. uh, sport, <clears throat> the, the best teams aren't the ones with the biggest budget. Um, it's so much can be achieved 
with an incredible culture and it's been proved um, that that has changed in certainly in rugby you know when you look at Exeter in my generation weren't in the premiership mm -hmm. and yet they've won the premiership and the European Cup and they have an incredible culture and history behind them now and I think that's what I found very difficult to accept in large corporates was the culture just wasn't there and I think if if you wanting to join an organization that will start to build that culture out ESG is something to hang the hat on of of that culture so I think you're right reverse mentoring mentoring um, finding a company that that is labeling um, rather than just hiding away mm -hmm. um, then you've got the challenge of selective reporting um, but you know uh, look let to label is to better is better than not label and 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 those ones that are, um, have the integrity we, we, we touched on the integrity button there is to it's really difficult for a marketing agency to say look we're really bad at this and sort of sell it and market it but the truth of the matter is look you know I think from a sales point of view you do not want to talk to me about this even though we market it is a really hard conversation and you're not going to get paid to do that but um but I think you will gain respect and people will um answer the phone or whatever your um uh, communication tool is mm -hmm. they will want to speak to you because they have trust in you and I think in sport trust is everything if you don't trust your teammate in a team of 15 then there are going to be gaps and weaknesses and you're not going to win so I think um trust is and the culture is 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 everything and when you start to learn about ESG and what good your company's doing because some some of the companies don't actually share it and show it so you've got you've got the one marketeers that are marketing um uh, you know, falsely uh, yeah. and and leading you away from a detrimental element to their business, oil and gas, versus the ones that just need to really pick up the phone or have a few Zoom calls with the good <laughs> that's happening in an organisation and start to market it because people will buy off you because of that nature. And there's some, there's some great statistics around from a tech point of view in the tech sector of how profitability and growth has been achieved by pushing the ESG button um, specifically for me in the environmental it's being proved and there might be a slight lag but for the sustainability of your business it's everything so why are you dwelling on any sort of decision or why are you stalling get on with it I, I think you've raised a really interesting, interesting point. And as you were kind of talking there, I kind of reflect back on the, the, the data center side of things because this is the way the world is going. The metaverse, Web 3.0, blah, 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 blah. The chances are most of these organizations around the world are probably sitting on one of the, the big boys out there. So Azure, AWS or, um, or Google Cloud. And actually, if you do research into what they're all doing, they, they are doing their damnedest to make their the supply chain, if you will, as environment, you know, as environmentally uh, friendly as possible. So if as a seller, you're not necessarily comfortable in volunteering that in a conversation yet, to your point, Andy, get the marketing team to put that as, as at least part of the, you know, the marketing collateral powered by, and actually we're offsetting X in terms of the X, Y, Z planting trees or whatever it might, uh, might be carbon capture to at least start the education process. So a buyer, I go, huh, okay, that's cool. I didn't know that. So it's like kind of that soft kind of approach in. And I also guess, you know, going back to, you know, how elite sport across all, you know, sporting industries are now, you know, using data, using, you know, artificial intelligence and data points to help make inform more informed um, decisions about, you know, players and this and that and so, I mean, all the clever stuff that now goes on. And if you look at kind of the world of Formula One, I'm a big F1 fan. I mean, Sunday was insane what happened in, 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 that, uh, in that race. But when sales and marketing is now moving to much more of a data-led uh, approach, but in, in your world, what sort of things are you seeing around organizations trying to create um, platforms that enable organizations to kind of surface data points to help them make more informed decisions, just more informed decisions, or is, to your earlier point, is it just a little bit too early for 
for that kind of thing, which is why it's not unregulated, but it's a little bit in the Wild West, possibly. Yeah, well, I think it's definitely uh, Wild West. And I, 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 I still um, click my neck slightly uh, when I see some of the sales narrative that's come coming out and saying we're a sustainable company we're you know we're green and and you're just like oh you know if you really knew the truth uh, mm -hmm. of your own supply chain you, you wouldn't be saying these things and i think sourcing is everything and that's where uh, the, the the verification needs to come but there are companies that do um your so a lot of companies mark their own homework but there are companies out there now that can mark your homework mm -hmm. and give you a badge um you know news to me in cop 26 was a bank going b corp which i was absolutely astounded by why i why i was astounded is 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 my naivety and and ignorance um but i was still shocked by that i was like wow okay um you know and then one of those great institutions where you pretty much when you get your first bank yeah there's not many that change right mm -hmm. so who is the green bank of the future i i can't really yep. answer yep. that to be honest but one is becoming a b corp and uh any of your listeners can guess that. Honestly, I would give a, an England shirt away because I don't think they'll guess. I really <laughs> genuinely don't think they'll guess uh, which one it is. And, and so I think, um, yeah, I think the, the, the market really needs to understand its in, entirety. Yeah, so once you've, you're of supply chain. So once you've answered and you've got a sales pitch, mm -hmm. you know, you really do need to know your stuff because somebody will throw you a couple of curveball yeah. questions. And if you don't know, you're going to look an absolute mug in front of your customer. So, and it's, it's fine for not knowing, uh, go away and find out. Yeah. The likelihood is your business doesn't even know. So that's where I now come back to the experts and the plan and what it is that you're actually looking into and by 2023 we will know x mm -hmm. those are fine narratives to have but when you're just shooting into into the wind and you know you'll get called out and that's yeah. where it becomes really embarrassing and your integrity is going to be questioned um and the fact that you just don't know your stuff and don't know your own business um, but I think that from a cultural point of view, selling is, I, I love talking to customers because I genuinely want to help them and I want their culture and I want their business to improve. And I think this is where um, the, the nail on the head is, is they're the prove it. Yeah. That's the bit that we've got to do now. So how do you prove it? You prove, prove it with metrics, proper metrics around carbon, carbon being the new currency. Mm -hmm. um, We've got a job to try and prove that we're still, you know, the austerity measures, we're saving money and we're doing all that good stuff, um, which being sustainable can be more expensive, mm -hmm. but actually some companies don't care, some do. You could do polls around that. Some, you go pay a pound per box more. No, I don't want to do that. Yeah. But you'll be more sustainable. No, I don't want to do that. You'll get, you know, 50-50, yeah. I reckon, in, in that regard. But I think the proving bit is where, uh, is, the, is the fact that business is so complex behind the scenes to get data points out that how you're creating um, the, the touch points of all that information to give a dashboard that is easily, you know, in, in sporting terms, simple, simple to understand and people can get it and they can, they can lay uh, an anecdote on something. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where a circular economy comes really, really powerful and big. It's not just a sort of end. It's a, this is going back into evolution again, and we're making a product by doing this good thing. That's the sort of future, I think. And companies just don't do it. They have this static, linear, um, selective reporting, and it's damaging now for us all. So new jobs are going to be created to find mm -hmm. this. And then, and then it's understanding, you know, working with the other supply chain that's what i'm really fascinated and excited about is working with the customers suppliers you all coming together we're all in the same boat we're all each other's scope three emissions and therefore we've got to do better and we've got to collaborate which 
we we've been in a business where you're just siloed mentality of selling what I've sold and what I'm paid to do. You've got to you've got to have more strings to your bow all of a sudden and more connection points in that supply chain that you can get to that customer at the right time. So not the heavy selling when they don't want to be sold to. It's delivering that um, proposition and solution at the right time. It's kicking that drop goal to win the game at <laughs> the right time, which happened to be the last minute of extra time. Uh, you know, uh, that's it. Pitch done. End <laughs> Story over. But I think I mean, what a great anecdote to um, to look at. But if we if we take that, you know, the drop goals to end all drop goals, it was a team effort that created the environment and the, the space and the position for Johnny to be able to, to do that. And it's the entire supply chain of the team, actually, that got England to that, that moment to have the fortitude, mental strength, the, the training, the conditioning, the nutrition, the, all of it, the data to create that opportunity for, you know, for, for Johnny and the team to, um, to achieve that. And he always talks about it was a team effort and it was you know, never, never um, uh, him. And back to your point around culture, team, collaboration, the experts that, that, that do all of this. This is actually, if you look at the, the overall narrative in sales and marketing functions, and actually more broadly business, all of this is now coming to the, to the fore. But fundamentally, we just have to change the way that we do business. Unfortunately, it's taken human catastrophe in a global pandemic to kind of get the planet and the world, the world to, um, to wake up. Yeah. And yes, I think it's, it will take brave organizations to put their hands up and go, you know what, we're not doing a good enough job, but we're going to try. And this is what we want to try and do. And also, you know, work with your supply chain to actually understand the end to end piece back to that, um, that, circ that circular economy. And it I, I got to say, yeah, I agree. And I, I wish this was the narrative. So I'm going to make this up. Um, but um, England versus Australia in 2003, we were powered by renewable energy and Australia were powered by fossil fuels and, and, and dirty mining, right? So, so I wish that was sustainability and ESG won the World Cup. That, that would be my perfect narrative for now. See, that's the difference between winning and losing is that is that it's powered by renewables right so but the the truth uh, obviously is far from that um but yeah that would be my uh <laughs> <laughs> i like it i mean you know you, you can kind of play on that anecdote you know when you're introduced maybe more effectively your next speaking your next speaking um yes <laughs> your yeah. next speaking event that'll be the that'll be the <laughs> yeah the next uh the next <laughs> blog <laughs> um, Andy, it's been an absolute pleasure um, talking to you. I feel we could talk about this for, for ages. And more importantly, we need this conversation needs to continue. This, this is why I wanted to get you on, on, the, on this podcast. You, you've got a platform, you've got a voice to leverage that, to get that out into, um, into to my community. If people want to learn more about what you're doing um, with you know, um, NS2 and New Scope, which is the, the rebrand and how that might be able to support what the, what they're doing in their world. Where, where's the best place for them to kind of find you and uh, and, and make contact, as it were? Yeah, I, do, I think LinkedIn. I mean, I, it's such a great place to share, and and, and it's for me. I, I want to educate. I want to you know call it out, mm -hmm. say how it is. I mean, I posted a picture of Dad and I at Twickenham, and on the changing room walls is a um, is everyone's name that's ever played for the, their country. And it was amazing to have a picture with my dad next to it. And it got like 50,000 views. I posted that um, children had more um, lead in their bloodstream because of poor refining of precious metals through uh, circuit boards and technology. And it like got 100 views. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like people don't really want to. But, but, but genuinely on, on LinkedIn, uh, my profile, um, I, I want to share everything and, and educate uh, so that then if you are somebody that's following me, mm -hmm. you can go back into your organization and articulate a challenge. Yeah. If you can help your own organization, help them save carbon and, and create a, a, a better and greener solution for, uh, because that's part of the problem is you're selling to a procurement that isn't ready mm -hmm. uh, and a supply chain that has, is trying their hardest but it's just not there yet. So it's a really, it's a really hard 
thing to to to, to kind of pr proposition and sell. And, and I, you know, we but but being honest and having integrity, that's what I want to give people is that education of what the reality is. Perfect. I will put the links and what we're going to do on YouTube somewhere in the in the chat for you to go and follow um, uh, follow Andy. You heard his offer without googling that uh, that bank. Um, the first person to reach out. I'm going to put Andy on the spot now. Yeah, with the, English uh, shirt coming your way. That is an integ that does it with integrity. So hasn't googled it. Um, there's potentially England uh, English shirt flying your way. But um, uh, Andy, absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for um, uh, for being on here. I've uh, really really enjoyed this. Thanks, Alex. Likewise, if you want to be on the podcast, you know what to do, reach out to me. If there are people that you want to get on the podcast, same rules apply. Find me all over the internet, over social media, wherever you are in the world. Um, stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you next time.